Ronnie Radke and Max Green sitting next to each other. <laughs> what? What's yeah. up? Well, I can explain. You know, uh, Max, you want to tell them what's go- what's what what you're doing right now? Uh, well, I'm hanging out right now in, in, in your house. <laughs> hanging out in your house. Just got done eating some in and out. I just flew in today from Ohio. Yeah. I've been out there for 58 days. And what did you do in those 58 days? Stop drinking, stop doing drugs, start taking vitamins, and start working out and focusing on my life again and music. That, that is the reason why we're here to explain that. Max is sober. And it's a great feeling and it's emotional to see him sober. How you like me now, bitches? <laughs> sober, though, we swear. Yeah. It, I just, it's, it's crazy to see. Um, I thought he was going to end up dead and. Um, I, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm so happy for him. When was the last time you guys saw each other before now? I saw him. <laughs> Skinnies? No. You see, you're, that's how high you were. <laughs> I saw Max with Omar. That's right. That was the last time. I saw Max with Omar, um, and he, he looked like, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. He just, he's rattled and, um, it broke my heart, so... Is, it, is that actually what we talked about in one of the articles, right? Yeah, in one of those okay. articles. That was the last time? Yeah. Um, so bring us up to speed. Like, where were you at that point when, when Ronnie saw you and what was going on? Oh, this is going to get emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was fucking living in Studio City in a fucking horrible drug den of an apartment. Fucking not caring about anything except for myself. You know what I mean? Had some shitty people move in with me, um, living off my girlfriend, you know, got all my, had had left ETF, you know, got in a big fight with those guys and just kind of was like in a dark, dark, horrible place. And it was bad. Would you say that your vices were the source of that falling out with those guys or was there more to it or? Um, There was more to it, but that was definitely the uh, igniter. That was the, you know, that's, that's what sparked it all. You know what I mean? They, they knew that I, they knew I liked to party or whatever else and they, and they saw you know, me getting out of hand and we didn't communicate very well in the band. And um, you know, through like, you know, signing a new record deal and recording and then like money came in the picture, people got crazy and it was just kind of like, you know, my, you know, I, my addiction was my own downfall, so. It's very humble of you. Um, Seriously. So, you guys weren't in touch in any, I mean, when, when were you last, like, hanging out and in touch and talking to each other? I mean, this I, was, like, I before you went to jail? Yeah, I hated him because I loved him so much because we, we have the same birthday, man. It's like, yeah. I met him in high school. Like, I was at a talent show, and I was singing, and my, or a uh, pre-talent show, and my mic dropped. That's how I met him, and he ran and jumped up on stage put my mic back on the thing because I, I couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, I was playing, so. My band was then, sitting there laughing or whatever else because it was like, we were in like, he was in a band, I was in a band, only two like yeah. bands at our high school. And so, so it was kind of like a rival thing. It's been history and then, so we did everything together. We, and yeah. like, I was like, when's your birthday? He's like, December 15th. I'm like, <laughs> same year. what did you say? And He's now, one year older. One year older and I was like, pull your, pull your ID out. <laughs> He's like, pull your ID out. I was laid on the table, I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, <laughs> you know. So we have a lot of similarities, and you know, and we connected on a, on a higher level than most friends would, you know. And how old were you guys at the time? Seventeen. Sixteen. When did you both sort of discover partying together? Was that where you, uh, were you, you know, toxic twins? Uh, we bre- we were in a band. We branched out, but we always stay connected. But he would party. He was partying in high school, but not like the kind of crazy party. He just, right? Yeah, it was a just bit. like drinking and stuff like that yeah. mostly. And I, I would probably say, I mean, um, when did we start? I don't remember. F- um, Together. I remember probably the first time was when we were over at our friend's apartment when I used to date that girl Megan or whatever, and we did oh, drugs yeah. in the bathroom at. Uh, that was. I don't want to say 18, any last names, but like old? Tyler and David's house. Oh, I was like I 18, think maybe. 19? Yeah. Yeah. And, what, and what was the vibe? I mean, at that stage of using, was it like this is fun? We're yeah. raging, and it's, it's just fun. life. Life was just great. 
Yeah. It didn't matter. It seemed like a thing where it was like, oh, like, oh, like, this is great. Like, this, th like. Never ends. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it got to the point where in Las Vegas, um, if your name is fucking Ronnie Rad, here, Max Green, here. Yeah, they would give you. Here you go. Yeah, they give you the, the drugs or whatever. But it got to a point where it started getting out of hand and that's the downfall, you know. Yeah. The separation of everything. For me first, and I, and one day we were driving, and I'm we're high as hell, and I'm taking a left on, I can I'll never forget it on Rancho, taking a left on the Craig Road in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and Max looks at me and he's like, "Cause I already I already been to rehab, and I relapsed already, you know." He escaped. Yeah. <laughs> I escaped. I escaped. Yes. Kurt, Kurt Cobain style. And he goes, he looks at me, he's like, you think I'll ever need rehab? And I looked at him, I'm like, dude, you don't even know it, but you're an addict. <laughs> and I laughed. And he laughed. <laughs> I go, ha, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, no, that's you, not me. <laughs> because yeah. it was like, he was like, when, when me and Ronnie would do shit together, it was like, he would be like, all right, let, let me do this first. <laughs> and, then, and then you can do exactly. it. I was, I, was, I, was, I was jumping out into the <laughs> <laughs> I was a crazy one, though. Uh, you were telling me the Olive Garden story just now, and there's some other. What were some of the the highlights of the low of the low lights? <laughs> the two by four incident. Why don't you explain that to yeah. them so so they know? Okay, we were at this. I, I remember the whole night. We were at this party, and I remember. I, I don't remember the girl's name, but I remember her little brother. Ashley was yeah. my girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, some, I feel, I, I think like someone was picking on his, on her little brother or something like that. Uh -huh. And Ronnie was always like, don't fuck with my friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like from the get go, like from the day we met. Yeah. And I think Wolverine said that tonight. Don't hit my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Pick on my friends. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so this dude calls, was his name Justin or something yeah, like that? Yeah, dude, you remember, yes. Right. Yeah. And he had called. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get jumped. Da, 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 da. This is going down. It's going down. Blah, blah. So we roll up to this parking lot or something, or this neighborhood. Neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. And um, all these dudes are getting out of these trucks with tire irons and two by fours and this and that and just like everything, right? <laughs> and, and so we called some of our friends up, and our friends met us there. And uh, I remember Ronnie was like, he looked at me and he goes, "Stay back. Hold on. Hold on a minute." So this. Dude, like, <laughs> I just remember I'm like standing by the truck or whatever else, and Ronnie goes, fight. He takes off his belt. He's swinging his belt around, <laughs> swinging his belt around, fucking hitting people. And then Ronnie gets hit in the face with this two by four, and I'm like, oh my god, are you okay? And he goes, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> and then just went ape shit on everyone. <laughs> yeah. And then we yeah. went home after that or we didn't go home we went to this the person's house went right to the bathroom the medicine cabinet and, and looked for drugs <laughs> yeah. i was like and my excuse then was like i just got hit in the face with two by four stabbed right. with, stabbed with a swiss army knife a little <sighs> tiny in my butt remember when we like, got hit remember when we got in that car accident and we went to kenny's <laughs> exactly yeah 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 what was the car accident uh just n normal <laughs> his uncle uh on family. christmas yeah, we went out to this place called the Crow Bar in Vegas. Yeah. This girl invited us out for this yeah. magazine thing. We ended up drinking and um, actually, lucky. Remember how lucky you were, dude? Yeah. That we moved. There was a there was a car seat car or something seat, in the yeah. back, and we moved it to the other side yep. so Ronnie could sit on the other side. Yep. And if we hadn't done that, he would have got hit by the because we were driving way too fast. I remember this like yeah. SUV cut us off, and I was like, oh fuck that, dude. I'm gonna put on my seatbelt. Put on my seatbelt. As belt. he puts his seatbelt on, his uncle's drunk. We're idiots for getting in the car. He, no. he, there's a, uh, there's a blind spot on the freeway and we come around this corner and there's just a pile of, there's already an accident there. So he slams on the brakes, slides sideways and we, we're just sliding sideways, the car hits us. I, I wake up, we're like in, like in the wall, like in the freaking wall and, uh, crazy man. and then I'm like, oh my God. Remember I when I ran almost, <laughs> I was like, I got warrants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so bad, dude. It was so bad. That's what made us connect on a deeper level, even yeah. more than like the coincidental birthday. Like it was in the stars that we were going to be rock stars. Both our dads but, like rode Harleys mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. There was just it was so many things fell in line. His dad was never there. Yeah. My mom was never there. And we related on that level. That we understood 
you know, the, the void that we had for the love of our parents. He came to live with me and my mom for a while. Mm -hmm. He never came to live with me because of my stepmom. <laughs> she's a bitch. She's a bitch. <laughs> she Janet. Was. Not, not uh -huh. my dad's wife now, but... <laughs> Janet the horse. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's gonna see this. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> you know, we're obviously you see a lot of bands and a lot of um, addicts and people that are in recovery. There's always the funny stories like, "Oh, it's crazy," but then there's um, the reality of you know that's maybe one out of ten times, and the other nine times when it's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just sucks, you know. Uh, how how bad did things get before, when you realized you needed to put it together? Oh my gosh, I've never talked about that. I've only talked about this in like not even got at this in depth in like meetings. Um, it got it got it got really bad. Like I I never ever thought that I would ever hit rock bottom. I was like rock bottom is not a place that's for me. Like it's never gonna happen to me. I will never let that happen. I'm I'm too smart for that. I used to tell people like I'm a I'm an intelligent drug addict. I'm a smart drug addict. Like I do drugs the smart way. <laughs> yep. There's no such thing. There's yeah. no such thing as that. And uh, I mean, it got to the point where it, I mean, it, it it led from like, you know, instant social partying to like having to like go out and you know get your get your pills or your fix or whatever else to needing that to then moving on to like harder drugs and you know moving on to Oh, I, I hate this word, but I'll say it anyways, heroin. And I became a junkie. And it's, and it's a horrible thing. Like, I ended up, you know, um, spending a lot of st money on stupid things. Um, That's what you do when you're high? Yeah. Um, it's retarded thing. You know, man. I mean, I, I went, I, I just, it, it just consumed my life. It consumed my life, and it was a horrible thing, lying to my family. You know, it got to the point where I was on a trip with my girlfriend at the time, and we were supposed to detox on this trip, and she got scared at the last minute, and uh, so we smuggled a bunch of drugs through this airport, through two airports, all the way from California to Florida. And I was, I was too afraid to do it. I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. And so, you know, she took, it, she took, took the lead and was like, oh, I'll hide this, no problem. And, um, you know, we, we ran out while we were there and we were, you know, s freaking out, scrambling to find some kind of methadone clinic or some kind of hookup in Florida, something like that. I'm thinking of like, who did I meet on tour last time I was here? Like, da -da 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 -da, you know, and, um, got to the point where her, we came home and her family was like, listen, we know what's up. The jig is up. So, you know, to my girlfriend at the time, they're like, you know, you're going home with us. And Max, you're going to jail. Because uh, I, 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 I took the heat for everything. I was mm. like, it wasn't her, it was me. Da -da -da, even though it was both of us, you know? And uh, I was like, I don't want to go to jail. Da -da -da. I was like, F this, F that. And, you know, we got in this big argument. And they're like, all right, well, you want to go to jail or you want to go home? I was like, I want to go home. So they sent me back to LA with no money, no phone, no nothing. And I was just there. And my girlfriend at the time, you know, slipped me her phone on the sly. So, like, yeah, I had someone to, to call. And they booked me the crappiest routing back ever back to LA and so I have all these layovers and I'm just in so much pain going through heroin withdrawals and if, for anyone who's still struggling or has struggled yeah then you know it's the worst it's the there's nothing that compares to it in how many days are you clean now 58 days wow. from all drugs all alcohol everything are dude you, are you ever going to do that again no I I withdrew from a I I've I I've been around the block I've done some. I've done my yeah. fair share of shit and partying have, have and living and dying. You, <laughs> you haven't been around the block. Then. Saskia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna say this shit. No, but uh. But no, dude. Just bottom line is, man, sober fifty-eight days, man, and that's. Yeah, I was in hell for a full thirty days. I've yeah. never withdrawn that bad in my life before. I was praying for the plane to go down every time the plane yeah. would turn. I was. I would. Pr I would pray to God. Yeah. I'd be like, "Let the plane crash, please." Let I withdrew from heroin in in jail. And because you've been to jail like for a week, right? Yeah. So you know, imagine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why, why were you in jail for a week? Uh, I had gotten a, a DUI uh, with one of my other ex girlfriends, and um, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it was my first offense ever, first time ever being caught for anything, first time in trouble with the law. And um, 
So, but I, I paid my fine, but in the state of California, you have to go to your DUI classes, you have to go to so many AA meetings and stuff like that. So I went to all my meetings, actually, not gonna lie, went to about two or three meetings and then found out from someone in the meeting that you can just forge the rest. So that's what I did, but I got away with it. But I didn't go to all my classes, and so, because I was touring. And so the judge just gave me so many extensions and said, well, listen, you've paid your fines, you've gone to your classes, but like you have to finish up, you have to fulfill your punishment. Like we have, you have to do this, this is the law. And so uh, it just came down to, well, you're gonna have to go to jail. And so they sentenced me to 30 days in jail in LA County. How'd that feel? I was like, uh, at first thing I was like, fuck. But then I, I honestly, the second thing I thought of was like, fuck man, I was like, Ronnie's in jail. I was like, <laughs> I can do it. I was like, I can do it, dude, you know? And, you, like, said, and you guys weren't even speaking or friends at this point. I hated him. I, I know. Hated, you could still picture, like, I still thought about him a lot. Like yeah. two years, I can do a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two, but, yeah, I did, it, I did it in prison, though. I got lucky because they transferred a bunch of prisoners over to the, to the county jail. And uh, so anyone with, like, a first offense or a low-level thing got filtered out really quick. I'll tell you one thing, though. L.A. County... No. Don't, don't, go, don't, go, don't go to jail. No. Go to LA County. I've never gotten behind well, the wheel. Jail. Never gotten <laughs> behind the jail trunk. If you are, go yeah. to Idaho jail. That scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. It's yeah. it's it's Thanks, it's man. crazy, man. I have this bracelet that said you're only says you're only one choice away your, from a different your, life. Show them your keys. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> so funny, I got on the plane today and right before I got on, uh, I gave the lady my ticket and this um, guy goes, oh, can I speak to you for a minute, sir? I was like, sure, as I'm like going through the little tunnel to get on the actual plane. And he goes, I'm a drug and narcotics officer. And he's like, um, we're just investigating anyone that has any last minute you know, tickets that buys tickets by the last minute or whatever else or this or that. You mind if I check your stuff? And I was like, oh, no problem. So he's like going through my bags or whatever else, checking my pockets. I go, oh, he goes, what's that? I'm like, oh, these are my uh, NA tags. Clean and serene for 30 days right go. here. Let him go Yeah, right and then let me go right through him. That, nice. that right there makes me so happy, man, that I never would have thought I would see you holding that. My first day, someone, my, this lady who I met at a, at, actually at an ETF show, uh, I went out to one of, just to go see the guys, and they were like stoked I was sober. They let me go on stage and play a show with them, and I met this lady named Rebecca afterwards, and she was clean for like five years. And so my first day of the meeting with her, she gave me this metal one. She's like, you know what the deal is with the metal ones? I was like, what? She's like, if you ever want to use again, you put this in your mouth. And if it dissolves, you're allowed to use. And if not, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty clever. She's like, that, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. I'm this joking. thing will never melt. <laughs> <laughs>